gonna fucking rape and kill you pieces of fucking shit. I'm gonna fucking rape and kill. I trudge along in a blizzard of semen. A blizzard of semen squirting from your penises. I don't understand. How can CBS continue writing all these crime dramas like CSI and NCIS? It made sense in the early 2000s. But there are so many security cameras and cell phone cameras now that there, there should be no challenge in solving any of the mysteries. In big cities you could practically make a video of every step somebody has taken from one place to another. If you could string together all the snippets of surveillance footage where you are recorded against your will as you travel. So what is there for CSIs to pick over anymore? With all the spying <coughs> on people through the internet, conducted by the NSA as well, um, they, can't, they can't really write a murder mystery that takes place in any public venue anymore. If somebody is found dead in a hotel room, just look at the surveillance video of when the killer entered and left, what car they drove. A any public venue as a murder scene should be off limits to the writers because of cameras. It would be just too easy to solve the crime. The episode would be five minutes long. You don't even need to pick through the forensic trace. Cameras, cameras make it that all the forensic trace is more like icing on the cake to reinforce the strength of the case against the defendant. I stopped watching all these shows in about 2007 because they got so tedious and boring, so I don't fucking know how they can carry on the same formula into the present year in which you're watching this video, because as more people install security cameras on their houses, uh, solving most crimes will be a, a no-brainer. <laughs> Only the most determined intelligent killers will pose any problem if somebody was in a bad relationship and they argued and the victim ended up dead because of the killer being mentally ill there there just won't be a story anymore just look at the security camera footage to see which crazy family member it was all these tv shows are going to die in a few years and detective fiction will become an antiquated genre uh, the government is moving us toward a future where detectives don't have to leave the station. They'll just solve any crime by clicking buttons on their computer by way of a mass surveillance machine that DARPA was dreaming up since the late 60s. There was actually a time, there was actually a time when I wanted to be a CSI, but that quickly went away as after two or so years of watching the show and uh, as I matured someone began to realize the CSI's were the bad guy according to someone's views. The CSI's in the show always come off as kind of a cold and arrogant bully type characters and they were so wooden most of the time. It was hard to relate or care what happens to them. However, something about someone's brain changed and this someone started caring for the bad guys in the show instead of the good guys. This someone felt like 90% of the time the killers had a good reason to do what they did. Um, the killers would have all these emotional problems. They had challenges they faced in, in life, all these things that the detectives don't really experience. It just felt like the killers were settling a score with, with the victims and it's their own personal battles and issues that felt like, why is it any of my business or society's business to care and arrest them? 
I mean, why am I supposed to care if a husband killed his bitch wife or something? And why should I be on the side of the detectives? The, the detective characters really felt like unwanted interlopers who just involve themselves in something they don't have to. They should just quit their fucking job and leave people alone and find some other hobby. Why the killer character is relatable? Well, because they have to overcome great odds. And a lot of times they were just dealt a bad hand by life. Maybe genetics wired their brain in some improper way that makes them angry or something, so they didn't choose it. Or they were just trying to avoid having something bad happen that would change their lives for the worse. But what is the motivation of CSIs to solve this shit? It stopped making sense to somebody. They just act arrogant. They enforce a lot of laws that shouldn't be laws, just because they're laws. And then they try to say something smart-ass or arrogant to the killer after they get caught. When what the fuck did the killer even do to them? Nothing. I mean, why should you give a shit about some detective asshole who was depicted standing like this at every crime scene, in every fucking episode, trying to look badass, I guess. On top of that, there was so much police propaganda in these shows. All kinds of pro-surveillance propaganda. All kinds of pro-government digitally spying on you being a good thing propaganda. I watched one episode of NCIS Los Angeles, and back in 2007 it showed them solving the crime by hacking into CCTV cameras of various businesses, which should be technically impossible, since it's called closed circuit for a reason. It's not networked to the fucking internet. But it's like all of these shows were tailored to drive a subliminal message that authority is good, and government spying on you is good, and mass surveillance is good. Look at all the killers that will be caught if the government can spy on you. I guarantee there's a lot of science they would make up as well. They would zoom and enhance video. They would take VHS tape video and zoom and enhance to a point where, if that was possible, then every VHS video should be capable of being transformed into something 10 times higher than 1080p. That's not possible in real life. If pixels don't exist, they don't exist. You can't enhance to a point where a cell phone video from 2007, capturing windows of a skyscraper in its frame, can be enhanced to a point where you can see a woman behind one of the windows and tell if her hair is wet or not. Oh, but they've done that on CSI. I understand why they do this. You know, they need cooperation from law enforcement to film this bullshit. So I bet law enforcement tells them, in turn, as a favor for their co cooperation, to put a bunch of lies like this in the show so the bad guys are more paranoid. They get the personalities of the killers wrong, too, making it seem like they're all genius villains that are scheming, when most of the time people might kill in rage because they have bad brains with no plan. There is not going to be some tangled web of a story behind each killing with a parade of suspects and puzzle pieces in real life. The whole thing pissed someone off. The capabilities of, of forensics have always pissed someone off. This person always had a wish to live in a time period where forensic science is much less advanced. Eventually, I need to write a story where James Grider starts going against all this shit. Imagine how CSIs come in and interrupt people's lives because they need to investigate a murder. They might shut down a street or kick you out of your home, 
or take your property because it's evidence. Seeing that on the show would piss someone off. Why should you be inconvenienced for the sake of some murder victim you don't care about? It just makes you want to start kicking all their stupid, carefully protected evidence around and throwing it out of the crime scene and telling them to go fuck themselves and investigate it out there. It's like... This is, these shows are a depiction of people who force you to live a shitty life and tolerate things, because if you don't, forensics will be used to find you and make your life even shittier by putting you in prison. Rationally, you think in your mind, who the fuck are these strangers to enforce how you live your life? Then, even worse than forensic evidence, now there are cameras everywhere. The whole world is heading in a complete opposite direction of where someone wants it to be. It's, it's very infuriating. It's very frustrating. I tried watching one episode of CSI after many years just to see what it's like, and I only got halfway through it. It's a lot worse than I remember. It feels like a high school production. The acting was so cringeworthy and laughable from the guest stars. But the main actors are hardly much better. They just speak like they're reciting blocks of expositional, carefully written out text. People don't naturally talk that way. Good thing there were a lot of good shows made lately that depict characters that are sort of like bad guys, which makes you root for that person and present them in a sympathetic light. You know, characters that would otherwise be considered a criminal or a villain on a TV show like CSI. For instance, like Breaking Bad or Bates Motel. Dexter was watchable because at least it straddled that line as well. It's weird how someone can read a book about a killer burning a whole family alive and feel nothing, but but start feeling angry when they read about investigators coming over and start doing forensics on the crime scene. Someone watched that Buffy the Vampire Slayer show and to them it felt all the killers to the CSIs are like the vampires to Buffy, where CSIs just have to go out like Buffy and keep taking out the killers. They keep arresting the killers, but more killers keep showing up episode after episode. A lot of the killers might have interesting backstories and reasons for killing. If you could journey through the story from their perspective instead of the CSIs, you'd probably want them to get away and feel sym sympathetic. Like, imagining them, like, imagine them killing someone in rage, then living with the fear of being caught, and accepting the fate of a life in prison soon as the handcuffs are attached to them. See, put yourselves through that mentally instead not into the heads of CSIs or the victims. The victims never had any effect on someone watching CSI, but the killer's plight did. Think how frustrating it would be to be captured in the end, especially when you simply acted a certain way because you wanted to improve your life or, or you were just dealt a bad hand by the genetic lottery. It's like in the movie 13 Cameras. Someone actually rooted for the bad guy instead of the victims because he was so interesting and the victims really weren't. Even horror movies make you care more about the bad guy than the victims because the victims are always boring and stupid in horror movies.